Hi everyone, my name is Denis Anjitbash and I'm a product manager on the Visual Studio team. And today I'm here to talk to you about Visual Studio 2022 and what we're here to provide you. Visual Studio continues to empower millions of developers around the world to develop top class code on a very powerful IDE. Over at Visual Studio, it is our top priority to ensure developers simply love our IDE and choose to use it every day. In order to do so, we need to continue to not only be innovative as a team, but also to continue to listen to what our customers want and need to create a product they love. Specifically for Visual Studio 2022, our three key themes are to improve personal and team productivity, bring modern development tools and support to our users. Finally, we wanna innovate constantly and bring our users the best IDE experience possible. So let's look at some of the most noticeable changes you might be seeing when using Visual Studio 2022. We've made lots of improvements across the board for Visual Studio 2022. Some have been in the realm of the system architecture, some in UI changes, modernization and personalization, and finally, a significant number of changes in developer productivity to simply make your life easier. Throughout the duration of this session, we will break down each category and understand what these changes entail and how they might be impacting you. Let's first start with architecture. Of course, as you would imagine, it's crucial to make sure that Visual Studio performs at the best level in terms of security, performance, and hardware capacity. This is why we made the decision to transition Visual Studio 2022 to be a 64-bit application instead of a 32-bit application. Evolving to a 64-bit application means that Visual Studio is no longer limited to four gigabytes of memory in its main process, allowing for developers to work with larger, more complex solutions without running out of memory. We actually have noted that this transition has reduced out of memory crashing by around 40%. A 64-bit application also enables those of us who work on very large repos to work through the process a lot smoother. You can do much more in the IDE while loading in much bigger solutions. Having a crash-free, fast, and smooth development experience is an essential for a day-to-day -day coding experience. We hope that this evolution to a 64-bit Visual Studio enables you to feel this improvement. Now, let's move on to our second major noticeable change, UI changes and personalization. Visual Studio aims to be more modern as an environment, and therefore, we are bringing in some new UI changes. We have refreshed the user interface to help streamline the experience in the IDE. Many changes are cosmetic and aim to modernize and reduce crowding and complexity. In addition, as a developer myself, I also know how selfishly personalized I want my IDE. Luckily, Visual Studio 2022 allows me to pursue this selfishly personalized experience. So let's take a deeper dive into what these changes actually are. As a team, we're keenly aware that even seemingly small changes in iconography can have a significant impact on the day-to-day -day flow for existing users. We have three major considerations that we heard from developers when developing a fresh set of icons. First, consistency. Developers indicated that change is completely okay as long as it doesn't alter the meaning of an icon. Second, legibility. It was clear that meaningful and consistent color usage makes it easier to recognize and understand these icons. And finally, familiarity. We saw that sharp contrast and recognizable silhouettes are essential for icon recognition. Combining these findings, here you can see some of the differences in icons between Visual Studio 2019 and Visual Studio 2022. We've also introduced Cascadia Mono as a default font. Cascadia is a new, modern, monospaced font family that provides better flexibility for command line applications and text editor experiences. Cascadia Mono, which you might also recognize from the new terminal, was designed for optimal legibility and accessibility. Cascadia Code is also introduced in 2022 as an option for developers who use programming ligatures. And finally, we've also added an updated dark theme that's easy on the eyes, plus new and more accessible font options in the editor. We've updated the dark theme with improved accessibility, better alignment with Microsoft design language, and more consistent color alignment. 
Over the last year, we've seen data that shows that the dark theme has replaced light theme as the most popular. And we've also seen a growing trend towards dark theme in developer experiences within Microsoft and across the industry. It is our responsibility to make this theme as best it can. So let's move on to themes. As we continue on our journey to make Visual Studio more personalizable than ever, we know that picking a great theme can be the first step to have your perfect IDE. For Visual Studio 2022, we teamed up with VS Code theme authors in the community to test a new tool to convert their themes to work in Visual Studio. Not only does this enable you to choose some of the default VS Code themes by downloading the Visual Studio theme pack, but it also enabled some of these theme authors to bring even more custom themes into the marketplace. For example, we can look at the Winter is Coming theme actually developed by our very own Mads Christensen. Or you can install this Cyberpunk theme to get this cool looking IDE. Or here's another one called the Dracula theme. As you can imagine, the theme options become an ever-growing set of designs where you will be able to find the perfect one that fits for you. We are excited to see this community grow and continue to see new themes that fit your needs in the IDE. In Visual Studio 2022, we are also continuing to add more customization to your document tab and well experience. Towards the later versions of VS 20, 2019, we introduced the much appreciated option to use vertical tabs in order to stack your open documents vertically rather than horizontally. Now, in Visual Studio 2022, we are adding a new way for you to add color to your file tabs by project so that you don't have to hunt for your open files in the editor. Color tabs can also be a helpful organization tool for folks who have learning differences or focus challenges making the IDE even more accessible. But our developers wanted even more flexibility, so we gave them just that. We went ahead and added additional options to bold your current active tab, customize your tab width, and even add an extra close button at the top of your document. It's great to see such an awesome personalized change to get the exact experience you want. We plan to continue working at additional options for personalization moving forward, so I'm excited to introduce those later on. The last category I'll talk about today in Visual Studio 2022 is improvements to developer productivity. At this point, this should be a given to all of us. We all want to be as productive as possible when we are using an IDE and writing any sort of code. Well, I'm excited to show five different scenarios where you can be even more productive while using Visual Studio 2022. These five scenarios include being more productive in the IDE while you code, search, collaborate with Git, debug, and just simply get started with the IDE. Let's start with looking into the code enhancements. First of all, Visual Studio editor has a powerful spell checker. You can see here in the screenshot that the editor is detecting misspelled words. Not only does it detect spelling errors in full words like typing here, but also subwords in camel case. How awesome is that? We also brought the long awaited autosave into Visual Studio 2022. If this feature is enabled, anytime Visual Studio loses focus, usually as you change to a different application in, Visual, in Windows, VS will attempt to save every dirty document in the IDE. This will include project files, solution files, and even miscellaneous files that aren't part of the project or solution. If saving a file fails for any reason, for instance, the file is in read-only on disk, Visual Studio will keep your changes in the editor and simply leave the file dirty. Along the similar lines is bringing code cleanup on save directly into the product. Many developers expressed a lot of interest in an extension called the Productivity Power Tools for its ability to automatically remove and sort usings, format documents based on your specific rules, and more. We have now added this directly into Visual Studio, such that if enabled, when you manually, manually save the file via Control plus S, the designated formatting and cleanup settings will instantly be applied. This can allow you to keep your code more organized and sp stick to specific guidelines. Now, what better way to write code than not writing it yourself, right? 
Well, having powerful code completions will make your life easier and more productive while composing your code. Visual Studio 2022 now automatically completes C-sharp code up to a whole line at a time, using a rich knowledge of your coding context with a transformer model. Some complex stuff that will make your life better. Finally, we have added a live share chat feature to Visual Studio 2022 as a tool window in order to enhance your live share collaboration experience. Not only can you code together in the same files in Visual Studio, but you can also message each other directly. There is no longer a need to switch between other applications just to chat and message each other. You can do it all within your IDE. Now let's move on to searching. As developers, a quick and easy way to search our code should be a pillar for all of us. Visual Studio 2022 has some exciting and brand new changes to various search experiences. The first major area of improvement is in speed of searching. When we are looking something up in our code, we don't want to waste any time. We want to simply type something and get there. Well, Visual Studio 2022 allows you to do just that by introducing indexing for find and files. Visual Studio can now index your code to oftentimes provide you a near instant search experience. Let's take a look at the true impact of index find and files. Here, I am searching the same exact repository. The repository contains around 50,000 files. You can see at the top, we're using an unindexed version of find and files, which takes nearly 10 seconds to complete. We can compare this same search with index finding files as shown at the bottom. Here, the same exact search executed in less than one second. How crazy is that? It basically feels instant, even though I had 50,000 files. We also know that a lot of developers search code in one way or another. Some might use code search to explore their code and understand how some components work. Others might use code search to get to a very specific location they have in mind. Either way, as a developer yourself, sometimes this process of searching and finding a location might be frustrating and take you longer than you might want. Visual Studio 2022 introduces a brand new all-in-one search experience that allows you to search both your code and Visual Studio features quicker and easier than ever. Rather than explaining this, its power uh, in words, let's actually see how it works in real life with a live demo. Here, I have Visual Studio 2022 open. Now, let me go ahead and open the new all-in-one search. You can see, I can press this dropdown right here and see two options, code searching with a keyboard shortcut control T and feature searching with a, with a keyboard shortcut control Q. Let's start with the code search experience. A very lightweight and dismissible window is initially popped up in front of me. I can quickly search for different characters, search for different symbols across my code. Now, what is symbol searching? You can see I don't have any comments, any strings in this in the results. When I select a result, it takes me to the definition of that symbol. Let me open this again. Now, let me go ahead and keep this search window open. I can now click away and see that this window stays in front. I can drag this into a different monitor. I can put it into the corner, or I can do anything along the lines to make this feel optimal for myself. Furthermore, I can introduce filters to get a more specific search. Say I want to look up the basket class, but I have a bunch of baskets. Let me go ahead and filter to types. When I click this, you'll notice that we prefix the search with a T colon, and the results list only contains types. So now I can quickly scan through all my classes and see which one that I might be wanting to go to. Obviously, the cool thing is I can also do the same thing with just my keyboard without ever touching my mouse. If I type in T colon, the filter will automatically be selected. Similarly, I can type in M colon to automatically select the members. I can do a quick file search by doing F colon and saying catalog brand and getting, getting me to straight the catalog brand CS file. It'll take me there immediately. Again, to highlight what it looks like in the dismissible mode, 
let me go to the catalog brand and DTO.cs. The window disappears and I'm taken to the exact location. Super cool stuff. Now, another thing of all-in-one search is providing a search for Visual Studio features. We are all aware that Visual Studio has a bunch of features and sometimes it can get a bit overwhelming. We hope that the all-in-one search will make this experience easier. Let me launch the feature search experience. So for example, I can have something in mind that I want to get to. Let me think about git. If I type in git, I can see a bunch of different git commands that are extracted from the Visual Studio menu. I can launch a solution explorer by, pressing, by typing solution explorer and pressing enter. It'll take me straight to the solution explorer. So you can imagine there's a bunch of different stuff you can do with the feature search, and it searches all across the Visual Studio IDE. So that was great to look at with search. Um, but another area that we've been doing a lot of investment is the, is the Git experience. We want to make sure that you are as productive as you can possibly be when collaborating and using Git. Besides some cool new features that we will go through in a second, we've put efforts into simply a more responsive UI and a more performing Git experience. One of these areas we've added some additional Git functionality is Git diff viewing and staging. Here, you can get a quick view into the new colored margin support for graphical information of Git changes in the editor's margin and scroll bar. This makes it easier to differentiate between saved and unsaved changes that you've added, deleted, or modified. Color margins are actually interactive, and clicking them triggers the peak difference UI, where you can view your changes right in the editor without switching context. The peak difference UI summarizes the number of added and removed lines, making it easy to navigate between changes using simply the up and down arrow keys. Here, you can get a quick view into the new colored margin support for graphical information of Git changes in the editor's margin and scroll bar. This makes it easier to differentiate between saved and unsaved changes that you added, deleted, or modified. Color margins are actually interactive, and clicking them triggers the peak window difference UI where you can view your changes right in the editor without switching context. The peak difference UI summarizes the number of added and removed lines and makes it easy to navigate between changes using the up and down arrows. You can stage any chunk of code using the peak difference window by hovering over the change you would like to stage and selecting stage change. Alternatively, you can use the global stage button if you would like to stage all the changes you've made to a document. We have also added line staging support that allows you to work with specific lines of code, not just chunks. Adding such features to your Git diff and staging experiences will hopefully make the often frustrating task of using Git a lot easier to handle. Another area we have improved our Git experience is cross-branch and multi-repo support. In Visual Studio 2022, you'll also be able to compare your checked out branches with other branches, whether local or remote, directly within the IDE by using the branch picker. Further enhancements allowing you to, to more dynamically work with Git include the detached head support, allowing you to review code from a remote branch. You'll be free to run, test, and even commit changes with the ability to then discard changes by checking out an existing branch or choosing to keep your changes by creating a new branch first. We also now have multi-repo support. You can utilize multi-repo support to quickly switch between branches and do lightweight branch management across all your active repositories. This will allow you, for example, to work on a solution with projects hosted on different Git repos all in the same instance of Visual Studio. And finally, let's take a glance at one of the major performance improvements we've added for Git with the commit graph integration. When the commit graph is enabled, a commit graph file gets generated in your repository, which then is used to quickly parse and sort your commits. Git commit graph integration leads to improving the performance of your Git operations and significantly improving overall performance in Visual Studio. We've observed an average of 25% of 25 performance improvements in loading branch history in the Git repository window for a repository with 332,000 commits when enabling the commit graph in Visual Studio. Now, as much as we, find, we might find debugging to be a frustrating process, Visual Studio continues to fight to make this process 
an enjoyable and easy one. There are, uh, there are new features that give you more insights when profiling your apps. When using the profiler itself, you'll see common performance issues for .NET apps called out explicitly with descriptions in the profiler. You can also find a flame chart viewer that will allow you to more quickly uh, access, assess your application um, and where it's spending time. This feature makes it easier for you to identify and fix bottlenecks in your applications and improve your end user experience. We also want you to be able to view and debug code from anywhere. You can now navigate to source for all loaded modules for .NET and C++ that use source link or source server right from the IDE. You can even decompile source for any .NET assembly, whether it has PDBs or not. Bringing source link navigation into the product gives developers the ability to analyze the underlying implementation and debug the current code directly at runtime. Today, when developers want to debug code and put a breakpoint inside a class referencing something external, they have to find a path of step into's that lead to a source file to be opened. After finding this path, can you only put a breakpoint and see how the code works? However, finding the path of step twos can be very tricky as the assemblies are optimized. We have seen customers spend up to four to five hours debugging and still sometimes are unable to find the source of their problems without the source link navigation. Using source link navigation could drastically decrease this duration it takes to debug such issues. Now, so far, we've been talking about productivity gains while using the IDE for coding, searching, collaborating, and debugging. But what about before any of this even happens? Let's start with taking a look at the new project dialog, where you decide how you even get started with a new project. With the release of Visual Studio 2020, 2019, we released a search-based model for the new project dialog with the intention of modernizing the project creation experience for, your, for, for users. Since making that change, we've received a lot of feedback from our community identifying usability and discoverability issues around figuring out which templates are relevant for their use. The main themes we extracted from this feedback is, first, filters can be confusing and scope may end up being too narrow or too broad. We also heard that we we're missing a hierarchical tree view style navigation. The search functionality is a bit too rigid and results are populated too slowly. Taking these themes into account, we found that a two tiered tree view on the left side of the window allowing for navigation based on type and platform was the most desirable when combined with a separate language filter. We are actively working on this experience and would love to hear your feedback. We have various developer community issues for the new project dialog, so please, please share your feedback so that we can make the experience perfect for you. Our goal here is to present our users with a modern, easy to understand and leverage experience. Now, this session has been fun. I've talked about a bunch of new features that we have introduced in Visual Studio 2022. But obviously, I can't do this once a month. That's where the brand new What's New page comes into play. Visual Studio, Visual Studio 2022 will now be providing you with a page in your editor that quickly highlights some of the new functionalities released in the IDE for various versions. You won't have to feel like you are missing out by not reading blog posts, watching tutorial videos, or digging through Twitter to see what people are talking about. The What's New page will present you a bunch of brand new features and show you how to use them right at your fingertips. So that's a wrap of Visual Studio 2022. There are a lot more features and functionalities to try out in the new IDE, so I recommend you go download it today. To give, to give a quick overview of what we went through, Visual Studio 2022 is now a 64-bit application. We've introduced UI changes and personalizations with new icons, themes, and custom themes. In addition, we have added more customization to your document tabs. Finally, we've made Visual Studio 2022 more productive for developers by improving the coding experience with stuff like spell checkers, improving the searching experience with quicker finding files and a new all-in-one search, lots of Git collaboration changes, and improved developing experience with even accessing external resources 
and finally, improving your way to get started with the IDE. We hope that this, this session was helpful for you and you try Visual Studio 2022 for yourself. Thank you.